Although I would like to say just happy birthday to everybody that has had a birthday in the month of March and in the month of April. Um, it's going to be hard to recognize everybody, but I just do want to, want to do a blanket uh, to those who have had birthdays. So happy birthday to you. Uh, tonight, I would like to, uh, this is Wednesday. Uh, let's have a word of prayer, then I'll get into the message. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight and I ask you to forgive me, first of all, for my sins. Lord, wash me and uh, help me, Lord, to uh, bring forth a message that would be powerful, that would exalt you and lift you up, Lord, and give you the place that you deserve. Lord, you are a Savior. Uh, you are God Almighty and one that is worthy to be praised and honored and glorified. And tonight, through this message, may you receive praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, I'd like you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and if you've been following along with the broadcasts, I have been following a timeline, um, especially during the Holy Week, this began on Palm Sunday, went from Palm Sunday to Wednesday, talked about the events that unfolded during the week, and then I got to Sunday, and this past Sunday, I preached on the resurrection of Christ, and what a great, uh, what a great event it was. In the history of the world, uh, the greatest event that the world has ever seen. Uh, now, tonight, I would like to follow up and talk about the power of Christ, the power of Christ. Now, he had the power to rise from the dead. Uh, and what power is that? Not only do we have the power to rise from the dead, but he has the power to give life to sinners, the people that are dead in their sins. He has power to give them life. Uh, the scripture says, and you hath the wicked who were dead in trespasses and sins. And make no doubt about that at all. If you're saved tonight, you are alive in Christ. A person who is not saved is in darkness, and death abides in them. They don't have the light and the life that we have as Christians. Uh, the world may say that they do. The world may think themselves to be the same type of person a Christian is, but there is a a big difference between the world and between a Christian. The world is lost. The world is dead in sin. The world is in darkness. A Christian is alive. A Christian has the light of God in him. And a Christian has uh, a new birth, a new creature. The, the old man is, the old things are passed away, as the scripture says, and all things are become new. You're new in Christ. And that's, that sets us apart as peculiar people, as children of God. Uh, what a great, great privilege that is, and the power of Christ and the power of his resurrection made that possible. Now tonight I'd like to talk about the power of Christ, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'd like you to look in verse number nine. This is uh, the Apostle Paul talking. Uh, Paul was buffeted, a uh, messenger of Satan was sent to him to buffet him, lest he should be exalted. He was given revelations that no other Christian really received outside of maybe John. Uh, he, got, he got revelations given to him by God. Uh, some think that he actually put into the scriptures, it looks like he's talking about himself when he says he knew a man that was caught up to God, to the third heaven, and he received revelations. And because of that, uh, the Lord said that he had to send a messenger of Satan to Paul to buffet him lest Paul should be exalted above nature. So tonight, if you're suffering from different uh, infirmities and afflictions and things in your life, and you say, well, I got saved. I'm a Christian. Why do I have to suffer? Why do I have these infirmities and things? Because the Lord wants, us, wants to keep us down. He doesn't want us to get proud. And he'll send these messengers of Satan and these afflictions and infirmities into our life to keep us, to keep us down uh, so that we don't get exalted. Because Christ needs to be exalted, not us. We need to remain low and not lifted up with pride. We need to remain humble and exalt Christ to the position that he deserves. And this is what the Lord was telling Paul. And it says in verse number nine, and this was Christ speaking to Paul, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And remember that. That's something that all Christians should understand. When you're weak, you can be strong. You see, we don't fight an enemy that we can see. We fight an invisible enemy. 
The scripture says that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but we uh, against principalities and powers, the rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's our enemy, an enemy, enemy we can't see. So it's not a physical fight. For if it were, those that had big muscles and those that were strong and could run races and those that had all the, all the material goods in the world and those that were wealthy, they would be the ones that would win the race because physically they would have the advantage. But the Lord doesn't do things that way. You see, the world looks at that kind of physical stuff. God says that stuff isn't important. What's important is spiritual law. And your spiritual man is more important to build that spiritual man up. And so many Christians today miss that point. They're so focused on materialism and prosperity. And those are things that the Lord doesn't want us to look at. He wants us to look to him. And as he says in the book of Matthew, seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So remember this, when you're weak, that's when the Lord can make you strong. Okay, so Paul says, for my strength, he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So what power? You see, it's not through our might that we're going to win the battle, but it's through the power of Christ. And that power has got to rest upon us. You know, even my preaching, my preaching won't be effective if the power of Christ doesn't rest on me. You as listeners, it'll just, it'll just be a, a, a sound that you won't be able to march to. It, it'll be something you say, there's no power in that message. There's, there's, no, there's no excitement in that, in that sound that I hear in that preaching. When the power of God gets a hold of me, then all of a sudden the power comes through the word and the power comes through the preaching. And it's through that we have to exalt Christ and give him his place. And as the scripture says, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. To them, it's foolish. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross, the preaching of Christ. Um, the power of God's got to rest upon me. It's got to rest upon you if you're going to be a witness for God. That power has got to rest upon you. So whenever you're out and about, be humble and exalt Christ. Whenever you pray, be humble. Whenever you read the word of God, be humble. And that's something that through infirmities, God can teach us all of that. The power of Christ. Christ had power. He had power. And I love this one because I love water. And I, I, I was out in a boat uh, years ago with my family. We went on a deep sea uh, expedition there. When we went out, it, well, the weather was rather rough, and everybody was getting sick, and the swells of the waves were like eight and nine foot, and, and uh, we all took our Dramamine, but boy, it's still, you get out there, and my wife and my youngest daughter were just absolutely just wiped out. They couldn't do anything, and, and my oldest daughter, she's over there fishing away. She loves to fish, and so do I, um, and, and as we were we were fishing, my wife come up to me and she says, no matter what. And the captain said, listen, we'll all go back in if everybody agrees to it. And my wife said to me, she says, I don't care how sick I am. And I don't care if I pass out. I don't care what happens. You are not going to tell him that you're going back in. You're going to stay out here. And I was like, yes, captain, I'll do that. And uh, before the night was out, I remember going down to get some bait to put it on my hook. And when I went down to get the bait, a wave came up, it came up high and the boat went down and sunk this way. And I went down and I saw the wave and it about come up into my face. And all of a sudden I felt as if I was going to get green and my stomach started to churn. And the next thing I knew, I just, oh, I just threw up all over the place. And Brittany looked over at me and she started laughing. She was the only one in our family who made it through the whole night. But I remember those waves and I remember that boat and how that boat was just being thrown. And we were on a 90 foot boat. It was just being thrown and the waves had its, had its way with that boat. There was nothing it could do. And you know, it's that kind of power that our savior has. He was able to tell the waves and the wind, be still. So tonight, if your life is in upheaval, as the scripture says, be still and know that I am God.
Let's go to Mark chapter four. Mark chapter four. Mark chapter four. And let's look in verse number 35. Mark four and verse number 35. We'll see that Jesus had the power over the waves and the wind. It was his word that had power. And the word of God has power. Uh, the scripture says that the word of God is quick and powerful. It's very powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and of the intents of the heart. Uh, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in its sight. The word of God has the power to go down there between soul and spirit and cut all the way down into the quick. That's the word of God. It has power. And Christ's words have powers. We'll see here in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Imagine that. The boat's filling up with water, and there's the Savior asleep on a pillow in the hinder part of the ship. He wasn't worried about a thing. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. You know, just like that, said to the winds and to the waves, said, peace, be still. Winds, the wind stopped, and the waves, the power of Christ, the power of Christ over the waves and over the winds. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? You see, today in a contrary world, in a world that's in upheaval right now, you need to understand that Christ is there. The power of Christ rests with you. and He can get you through these difficult times. When the winds and the waves of life blow hard against you, that's when the Lord comes through even more. It says in verse 41, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him. What kind of man is this? He wasn't just man. He was God. Son of man, son of God. The power of Christ. He has power over sickness and disease. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I love to brag about my Savior. I love to brag about just the things that he's done for me in my life. And and we all love to give testimonies. And, and tonight, if you're listening to this broadcast, think about what he's done for you. And that should get an amen out of every one of you. Think about what he's done. Think about the things that he's, he's meant to you. And over the years, how he has rescued you and how he has helped you and given you the strength and the grace to get through life's, uh, life's difficult times. And, and not only just that, he saved your soul and you're going to heaven someday. Praise the Lord for his goodness. Uh, over sickness and over disease, his power. Matthew 4, Matthew 4 and verse 23. <clears throat> and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. Now watch this. All men. There's no disease. No disease that Jesus Christ can do. He's in control of it all. He can heal anything at any time. No matter how bad the person is, the power of Christ could heal it like that if he wished it. He wanted it. It says, in healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy. And he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. You know, 
we only have four gospels and in it it only has just a sample of the healings that christ did but in the book of john john tells us he says that if everything that jesus christ did every act that he did and all that he did it says in verse 25 of the last this is the last verse in the book of john and i'll read it to you you don't have to turn there if you want to you can it's in 21 verse 25 it says and there are also many other things which jesus did the which if they should be written every one watch this i suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. You talk about even the world. John says the world could not contain the books that should be written. How much? Just the, just a little sample. In three and a half years did Christ do that John says that even the world could not contain the books that should be written of him. Now, in Matthew, we have a hint of what Jesus had power over also, not just diseases and sicknesses. He healed all manner of those. He had power over devils. And it's troubling in the world we live. I was talking to somebody, a friend of mine, and, and he told me, he said, he's amazed. He's just absolutely simply amazed at how much demonic activity and devil worship is going on in our world today. And he said to me, he said, Kev, he said, it's just not amongst people that are, that are, are, are wicked, wicked, open, open, wickedly people. He said, these are, these are people that are everyday, uh, everyday people. Uh, he said, from Hollywood stars to musicians. And he said, all from all works and acts of life, all, all walks of life. He said, there's so much of this going on in the world today. He said, it's actually it makes me sick when I see this. Why would somebody want to worship Satan? But it's, so, it's going on so much and around us in the world that we live. It's because the devil is the god of this world. But listen, tonight his power pales in comparison to that of Christ. Yes, Lucifer was a great being, the greatest and most powerful being that God created. And when he fell, he became Satan. But to worship him over worshiping God, the Lord is almighty. Satan is not almighty. And tonight there are people that are spun up in devil worship and the devil's got them right where he wants them and they need to be freed from that. They need to come to Christ and they need to get freed from that. God has power. Jesus Christ has power over devils. Let's go over to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 and let's look in verse number... 17. Mark chapter 9 and verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spoke to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. He answered him and said, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. Wow, what a state this child was in. He wallowed and fell on the ground and he foamed at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And often, oft times it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. See something there? The devil doesn't have your best interest in mind. Tonight, if you're bound by the devil, he doesn't have your best interest in mind. He wants to destroy you. He wants to tear you apart. Christ wants to restore you. Christ wants to build you up. Christ wants to give you life and give you hope. The devil can't do that. Only Christ can do that, praise God. The power of Christ is so much greater. And so much, uh, when, when you enter into the, 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 the power of Christ, you realize the peace that comes through it and how you can conquer life's difficulties through that power. 
And a lot of Christians, unfortunately, they never tap into that power. They never grow in the Lord. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't fall in love with Jesus Christ. They don't fall in love with their Bible. They don't fall in love with their relationship with him. They're just so caught up in the things of the world. It's time. The Bible says redeeming the time for the days are evil. And Christians out there, we need to stay and get, get right with God and stay right with God. We need to stay in the word and we need to stay positive and in prayer. And we need to, we need to live and, 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 and live our lives in the power and in the might of Jesus Christ and, and, and let his spirit guide us and lead us. Uh, the scripture says in verse 21, and he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And isn't that us? We believe, but, oh, there's a part of us that still remains in unbelief. We believe he can, but there's a part of us that says, I don't know if he can. And we, and we struggle with that unbelief. And as he said, I believe, help thou my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked. The foul spirit saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? You see, it's something your King James Bible does for you that a lot of the new, uh, new translations can't do. It tells you the formula for getting rid of devils. And in verse 29, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer. And a lot of your newer Bibles stop there. But the King James Bible stays true and puts in there, but by prayer and fasting now that's where you got to be careful of bibles that take away from the word of god because if you're reading a bible that doesn't have fasting in it and you're only praying over this particular devil that devil's, devil's never going to leave the lord tells you prayer and fasting prayer and fasting what a strong bond that is prayer and fasting what a strong weapon against the devil prayer and fasting he had power over demonic spirits. The other thing that Christ had power to do, and this shows his omniscience, is he could read the thoughts of men. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. What a powerful, powerful Savior we serve. Luke chapter 7. And I tell you, I'm, I'm so, when I preach, I'm so used to hearing my church going, Amen, Amen, preacher. And sometimes I sit in a, in a room here and I preach on this broadcast and I can hear the cars behind me going by. And, and as I'm preaching, I'm not getting that, amen, I'm not getting that glory to God. And preach it, brother. And, and I, need that, I need that a little bit of encouragement. Uh, but I praise the Lord that I'm able to do this. And, and, and you hearing it, I know in your, in your hearts and even in your houses, you're probably saying amen to this. Uh, just the power of Christ. And when you think about the power of Christ, it rests upon everyone who's saved tonight. And if you know the Lord is your Savior, he's in your heart and that power is there. And praise God for that. He has the power to read thoughts. Uh, Luke chapter 7 and look at verse number 36. Luke 7 and verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet 
and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. He says, aha, if he really were a prophet, he would have known what kind of woman this was. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And tonight, if you're listening to this broadcast and your sins, which all of ours are great, but the Lord does save some people out of worse conditions than others. You have to, you have to admit that. There are some people that have had some very, very rough lives. And we've had missionaries and preachers that have come through in our church over the years, and they've had very, very rough lives. And we notice something about them. They just seem to love God a little bit more. Why is that? Because the Lord forgave them a bunch. And, you know, I praise the Lord for those that live a good, clean life and have given their heart and soul to Christ Jesus. And it shows how much you love him, that he has forgiven you. And you might not have had a life like them. But the Lord says, to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. The power of Christ. He can forgive sins. And of course, this filled them. All of a sudden, said, oh, what did he say? He said, our sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Power to read thoughts and read minds. And this is a good segue into the next point. Christ has power. And you know, everybody wants to be healed. We all want to live a long life. We want to live 90 to 100. We want to, we want to just pass off into old age. And praise the Lord for those that can. But not everybody's going to live to be 90. Not everybody's going to live to be 100. There are going to be those that die in their teenage years. There are going to be those that die in their 30s and in their 50s. There are going to be death amongst Christians. And we're going to, we're going to have to, in life, you never know what the Lord, what, what life can throw at you. But no matter what, no matter what, you have peace in your heart. And you know that no matter what, I'm ready to go. No matter what, I'm prepared because Christ is my Savior. You know, the scripture says, prepare to meet thy God. Christ has power to forgive sins. He has power to give life to the dead. Okay, let's go to the final point. Let's go to Luke chapter five. This segues right into the power to forgive sins. Luke chapter five. We're looking at the power of Christ tonight. Luke chapter five. And let's look down there in verse number 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what, by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the toweling with his couch in the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto, the, unto him, Man, Thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? 
who can forgive sins but God alone? They knew only God can forgive sins. The power of Christ. He forgives sins because he was God. He was God in the flesh. And he had the power to forgive sins. He said to the wind, to the waves, he cast out the devils. He had power over diseases and over all manner of sicknesses. He had the power to read people's minds. And he has the power to forgive sins. And tonight, that's who I'm preaching. I'm preaching Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know, at Pentecost, when Peter lifted up his voice and he began to preach, he didn't preach his opinions. He didn't stand up and say, be good to everybody and keep the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. He didn't tell them to go to church. He preached Christ Jesus. And the scripture says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Only one name, no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. You've got to be saved by the name of Christ Jesus. And tonight, I hope that through my preaching, I'm doing him justice, and I'm giving him the praise that he deserves. It's the preaching of the cross of Christ that saves. It's the preaching of the blood of Christ that washes a sinner from their sins. And there's no other way. I don't care what the world says. When the book says something different than the world, throw the world out. The book is right. The Bible stands alone. And the Bible tells us. And when, when Paul, when he charged Timothy, he said to him, preach the word. The word. Not opinions. This isn't my opinion. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Loved it. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. In him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, people are going to go to hell in this world because they refuse to accept the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. They refuse to accept the preaching of this book. Why they cling to everything else when the Lord says, forget all that, come to me. Accept the word of God. Except the preaching of the word. The scripture says, being born again, not of corruptible seed. This isn't some kind of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth. This is a living word, a living book, which liveth and abideth forever. This word has a place in heaven. The scripture says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. In fact, this word has such a place in heaven that God said that he's magnified his word above his very name. The power of the word of God, the power of the word of Christ, the power of Christ, the power of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You got to have it. You got to believe it. And you got to have him in your heart as your personal savior in order to go to heaven. Only one way. And Christian tonight, if you aren't putting him first, we need to get rid of the other gods in our life that have replaced him. And we need to put Christ first in our life. First and foremost. And let him lead us in life, in death. Let it, let's it. let trust him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. You want guidance? You want direction? Let Christ lead you. Let him lead you. And tonight, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, you're lost in your sins. But you're listening to the right broadcast. The preacher has pointed you to Christ. The preacher has pointed you to the power of Christ. You need to let go. Let go. And come to Christ. Come to Christ. As the song says, come to Christ. Make no delay. Don't wait another day. Give your life to Christ. Come to him. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He'll give you rest. He'll take your sins. He'll give you eternal life. If you'll trust him, if you'll trust him, he will save you. The scripture says, call upon the name of the Lord, and thou shalt be saved. You can have eternal life right now. 
if you're willing to call upon Christ as your Savior. Will you do it? Will you accept him? Will you come to him? You can pray a prayer like this in me. You can say, dear Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. Lord, I trust in your power right now. Your death, your burial, your resurrection. I want you to save my soul from hell. Please, right now, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. And be my personal Lord and my personal Savior. And give me this gift of eternal life. And take me to heaven when I die. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your precious name I pray. Amen. You said it. The peace of God has come into your heart. And now you are a child of God. Tonight, I just want to say, God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for tuning in. May the Lord be with you. Amen.